no way that an artist can paint deeply committed emotional portraiture without being uh, both a part of the portraiture and changing as a consequence of their effort. And it's no different to any form of leadership role in me as a commander. There is no way I can be a deeply emotionally committed commander without eating the consequences of my commitment to the command. If you care about the people you are commanding and leading, and you care about the consequences of your choice, then inevitably you will carry the burden of, of uh, residue through the rest of life in different ways. Ben felt that the photographs just weren't enough for him. He needed that physical contact, that emotional contact, that, you know, um, to be able to be sitting there speaking to these people in the studio, um, to really be able to express, you know, as John was saying, that inner depth and um, what Ben was seeing in them. This is, is an expression of Western military presence. Uh, just dropped in from space to do a job, supported from outside. Uh, a whole bunch of people who kind of don't care about that local area. A uh, bunch of contractors, a bunch of locally employed civilians, a bunch of military people, all with their either driven by their military duty or driven by their commercial commitments or driven by the necessity to live and make money. One of the remarkable things, I, twice when I was over there, I had to order the bombing of our own gear. Because once it was a Chinook helicopter, one that I used to fly back in the, in the early 80s, uh, that crashed and we had to, I had to order the bombing of that. And another one was one of these trucks that had got a mobility kill, meaning it had its wheels blown off on a bomb, or one wheel blown off on a bomb, it could no longer drive. It was on the wrong side of a river. So you've got this multi-million dollar device there, you can't get across the river. If you leave people there to protect it until we can repair it, they're going to die. So you then, I then get a phone call out of the million officers sitting there doing paperwork. That's what senior officers do, of course, just do paperwork. And, and out of the blue comes a phone call saying, hey boss, I need this need approval to destroy one of the trucks. And you go, right, why? Uh, and you know, they get a two minute brief on the why. And it's fine, do it. And uh, then they bring in a B1 bomber, which then comes in and and drops about 30 bombs on it, and this thing is still sitting there in one piece after that. <laughs> That's how well it's built. When bad days happened and someone died, her job in her ops room there was to receive the phone calls and set up a process to, to take it from that moment of death and destruction and, and to get the messages out and to make sure that everything was sent off was right. If we send off the wrong notification about the wrong person to the wrong place, we express it wrongly, then you actually end up with two families or more destroyed, not just one. It just, you know, it just came out of Daniel where he, you know, admitted that actually there's you know, I, I've seen some things and I've experienced some things that have affected me. So, and I think that's with a, with a lot of these um, people, you know, that, um, it could be for some a cathartic moment in recognising that within yourself. I think we're very lucky in Australia that we've got a military which remains part of our society and is held accountable to those standards. And we've seen that in recent months and years. Uh, that should all, always be a part and be retained within it. And so my duty here and why I do this is to retain that dialogue and, and in fact build it to a new level, a new level of maturity. Because I think that's an essential part of it.